So next up on the agenda today, um, we have the lovely Marion Scrimmagel. Marion is a proud Tiwi woman and was appointed Chief Executive Officer of the Northern Land Council in March 2019. The first woman to hold the CEO position at any Territory Land Council. Ms. Scrimmagel has been CEO of the Tiwi Islands Regional Council and a former member of the Northern Territory Legislative Assembly. In 2000, Marion became the first Aboriginal woman to be elected to the Legislative Assembly, representing the electorate of 2001 to 2012. Prior to her entrance into politics, Marion was the CEO of the Worley Whirlingjang Health Service and the first CEO of the Catherine West Health Board Aboriginal Corporation. Thank you for joining us today, Marion. Um, thank you. And look, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the Larrakia people on whose country we are meeting uh, today, but I'd also like to extend that to all traditional owners across um, our vast footprint uh, from Darwin to the Tiwi Islands, uh, down to Central Australia. Um, all of the past, present, and our emerging future leaders. Uh, look, when I was asked to speak at the forum this year, it made me think about my own uh, journey um, with the carbon industry, both on the Tiwi Islands, but also um, on the, the mainland, but in my capacity as CEO of the Northern Land Council, thinking about the multiple and overlapping uh, connections to the industry developed through my time, as uh, Nova uh, pointed out, as a member of parliament and supporting, I suppose, the very first uh, Savannah burning project in Western Arnhem Land. Uh, fire abatement project and, you know, my personal connection to the Tiwi Island Savannah Burning Project. And then more recently looking at all of the fantastic projects that are happening across uh, the Northern Land Council footprint uh, and fortunate as the CEO of the Northern Land Council, I'm able to uh, certainly engage and have a look at through the dedicated uh, staff and people working on the ground um, across our vast uh, territory. And knowing that our future is in good hands because if we look at um, the importance of fire and you know, caring for country, it is an important program and one that is certainly valued at the highest level in the Land Council. But today I wanted to cover uh, two main themes. Firstly, I wanted to take time to reflect on the contributions that those groups and all of you that are present uh, here today on your contribution to develop of an industry uh, that is worth around 20 million a year and growing. And it's important that it grows. And I think if we look back to 2006, when the first project uh, and people started talking about carbon credits and how this might work and, and 15 years on, uh, we see from uh, this small inception to seeing now a $20 million a year and growing project is I think a reflection of all of the dedication and the hard work that people like yourselves um, contribute to this. So. You know, the development of this industry um, and, and looking at what has been achieved here is a rare achievement in Northern Australia and something um, I think all of you should be extremely proud of. Secondly, I'd like to reflect on the place um, of fire and its centrality to cultural practices and how we preserve this as the central feature of all our caring for country work. And, and that is really important and I think key to, uh, you know, when our full council, our executive, our regionals, um, often people think that there's, there's no discussion, but it, it is constant discussion from those members of the importance of fire, fire management and the Caring for Country program. And more importantly, 
uh, something that is emerging and is quite successful is the learning on country, which uh, flows on from that. So we know that, you know, there's been some disastrous impacts um, of colonisation and that disruption of cultural practices, um, including the careful use of fire by Indigenous people to manage their country. And, and those impacts have been well documented. But we know in some of our remote communities, uh, thank goodness, a lot of those practices have remained intact and that uh, that transfer of that knowledge uh, certainly happens in and around a lot of our remote communities. But that impact and the result of that in a, you know, has been, we've seen some shift uh, towards widespread and intense late dry season savannah fires frequently uh, crossing the landscape. When we see that, there's a lot of damage and we can see this uh, particularly on down and on the eastern seaboard where there's been some a lot of damage to country and including in the Northern Territory where we see uh, those wildfires can generate uh, more emissions. If we look in the Northern Territory though, Indigenous people across Northern Australia have legally recognised uh, the interest in around 80% of, of the land mass um, and across dozens of language groups. And that's, I, I think that's sometimes not appreciated in terms of just how vast and how diverse uh, those groups are and, and the languages that are contained in that. Over the past 20 years, um, Indigenous groups such as yourself across Northern Australia have been actively re-establishing fire management on their country uh, through carefully uh, planned savannah burning projects. And, and we, we've seen that increase across many of the areas. Uh, since that initial establishment, as I talked about earlier, of community-led ranger programs and the pioneering work that was really important in the Western Arnhem Land Fire Abatement Project in 2006, which uh, was involving five Indigenous ranger programs. The Indigenous uh, carbon industry, uh, which is really important to, to think about, um, has generated nearly $100 million in revenue. And, and so it's not, a, it's not an industry that hasn't, uh, you know, had its financial upside uh, when you look at $100 million in revenue across uh, those projects and where it started in 2006 is quite significant. In recognition of this inspiring uh, work, I think there's a growing market for carbon credits generated by Indigenous owned savannah burning uh, carbon projects, which uh, we're seeing more and more uh, empowerment of Indigenous ranger groups um, across all of our footprints in our remote communities. And, and a lot of traditional owners, which is really good to see uh, by providing, pro providing a real source of independent uh, revenue uh, for those groups. As I said, the industry now brings in more than 20 million a year. In comparison to other industries, uh, people may say that it's small, but it's worth remembering that most of the money is stayed in communities providing benefit to traditional owners. But the whole concept of caring for country, if we look at what's happened on the Eastern seaboard and we've seen the wildfires and we've seen what's been destroyed, I think there are many lessons uh, that, uh, and the practices that happen in the Northern Territory could certainly be uh, transferred and, and provided to uh, those ranger groups and people uh, fighting some of those wildfires down on the eastern seaboard. So a lot of the, the money that, that is generated or the revenue that's generated uh, through this project, um, we know, goes on local jobs and certainly towards infrastructure and other priorities. In Nooka in uh, southwest Arnhem Land, for example, 
this revenue supports local culture camps, education initiatives and other community projects, which is really important uh, and is works in sync with the Learning on Country program, which builds the capacity of young people to continue those practices and to continually learn uh, those practices. That, that's, a, that's a really important thing, uh, particularly that thing that we see across the Northern Land Council footprint. Um, for Nooka, if we have a look at the Warikan IPA or an Indigenous Protected Area, um, the funding and the revenue for that supports our schools, the range of programs and outstation development. Um, so I think if we look at some of the areas where it's happening and, and the support, we need to continue to support and find and build uh, these, these programs to be more sustainable. Following the devastating fires that ravaged, as I said before, um, much of Australia in the summer of 2019, and all of us, uh, doesn't matter where we are, whether we're in Darwin or in our remote communities, I think most people saw the devastating fires uh, that happened across the eastern seaboard. Um, and, you know, how those fires burnt well into 2020. Uh, there is, as I said, a growing interest in fire management in Australia and in the world. Uh, in recognition of the thousand years of expertise in land management, which our traditional owners and all of our ranger groups that have been uh, working with that knowledge and that expertise that's been transferred to you over many years. Um, what you bring to the table is really important. And I think it was, it's been heartening and it's been not without um, and, and I think about time that there is that recognition that those practices are finally seen as being really important uh, in the, the management going forward in terms of uh, looking at those fuel loads and, and reducing that and making sure that what happened in 2019 and 2020 uh, can be reduced. So the growth has been exemplified by the steadily uh, rising number of Indigenous owned projects. So I think, as I understand the numbers that uh, were provided to me, we're up to 30, um, as well as the value of the Indigenous carbon credits on the carbon market, uh, which we keep going back to has quite, got quite a big value of around 20 million a year in that industry, which is all really important. Um, it's also resulted in the emergence of an Indigenous uh, led industry body, uh, which is the Indigenous Carbon Industry Network of which the Northern Land Council is proud to be a member of. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the growing involvement and recognition of the vital role of Indigenous women and the role that women are playing and young women, older women are playing and the strong leadership and fostering of good communication and knowledge sharing in the Indigenous fire management uh, through the range of programs. The Strong Women Healthy Country Forum and Women in Fire Initiative is, is an important thing and Often when our um, Indigenous women and, and those forums happen, happen um, I haven't been fortunate to be able to attend any of those, but I do get a lot of feedback uh, from those forums and I read all the reports and I just think it's fantastic that we're seeing the capacity of particularly our women standing up and, and working within this project. So. Um, I think we all need to uh, certainly acknowledge uh, the important role that women are playing. As we look around Australia and the world, there is no doubt that we are in unprecedented times and not only because of the impact of COVID-19, but this first time, um, you know, for this forum to be online, 
I think COVID has taught us all to do things differently and how to do it not only differently, but better. And I think uh, being online uh, and if we're out in our remote communities and we can join this forum online and to listen and to share that information, I think is just as effective uh, as if we're in the same room together and working um, and listening to um, you know, the, the speakers that are speaking. There are still a lot of challenges that we have in our remote communities. And we can see this by my brother, Willie Rioli, uh, where there are challenges uh, in terms of um, I, IT and ICT and, and internet access. That is still a major issue uh, that has to uh, certainly be addressed across our remote communities. And the Tiwi Islands, not far from Darwin, uh, but I know a lot of our remote communities, uh, the impact of you know, the breakdown in telecommunications is, is a major issue. But the impact of climate change, um, when we look at that and the need to rapidly reduce greenhouse gas emissions, as well as growing inequality across Australia, demonstrates a strong need uh, for all, everyone to invest in caring for country programs and in supporting uh, the economic development and empowerment of, of our people. So the fact that most groups across North Australia were able to continue their vital uh, fire management work to protect country, life and property despite the impact of social distancing rules uh, demonstrates the agility and the deep commitment of fire managers um, of their work and, you know, everybody played a key part in making sure that um, COVID and the issue of COVID that we all worked together to uh, ensure that community transmission wasn't uh, going to be an issue out in our communities. So the critical Savannah fire management work would not have been possible without as I said at the outset, traditional owners, all of the ranger groups, uh, vital partnerships with scientists, as well as the support of government across North Australia. Um, a lot of our non-government organisations, corporate uh, buyers of Indigenous savannah burning carbon credits. And, and that's really important because that's where we get the revenue and making sure that uh, people can have that buy-in. All of this demonstrates uh, through working together in a genuine and respectful partnership, uh, it is possible to bring substantial and lasting uh, change to our country and our communities, but also, uh, you know, I think elevates the important role that you out there, rangers, everyone that's involved in this, uh, plays in in doing that that work. It is it is important work, and I know that from the Northern Land Council's point of view, we'll continue to work hard uh, with you to make sure that uh, you know both funding, but also communication um, across industry uh, to make sure that we all work together effectively towards our common goal. Um, of supporting better savannah fire management. That um, I think we do need to look at, and, and I'm presently at a forum of uh, joint land councils. So we've, we've got uh, chairs and, and elected members of all of the four land councils in the Northern Territory looking at ABA. I think we do need to look at more funding for Indigenous savannah farm management, um, particularly on native title land. And there's still a lot of challenges that we have to do and the work that we've got to put forward with government so that native title holders um, can have um, a right to those pastoral areas, which is covered by native title. So, um, 
we we need to work with with government to make sure that uh, government programs such as the Aboriginal Ranger programs and the Indigenous protected areas are going to be uh, resourced appropriately. Governments uh, strengthen their support uh, for policies supporting fire management, and I think. Uh, we are part of the way there. I think that both federally, but also state, everybody recognises the importance of, of rangers and the role that our fire rangers, our uh, caring for country rangers play in terms of um, not just fire management, but also border control and all of the other work uh, that rangers do out, out on country. Uh, fostering collaboration, uh, we need to support the Indigenous Carbon uh, Network and the partnership across Northern Australia. Um, it would be good to get some buy-in, and, and I know that all of the land councils are supportive of that, investing in Indigenous-led scientific research to support uh, continuous improvement. So all of those areas um, we need to continually work towards and raising the awareness, I think we all have a role, but particularly uh, CEOs of Land Council with our Caring for Country managers and, and staff and you, the rangers out on the ground in communities, the value of investing in Indigenous owned carbon projects. And I think the value of that, uh, if we raise and all work together to, to raise the profile, of that, uh, we will see a greater investment. Uh, but certainly from uh, the Northern Land Council, from my chairperson, executive, uh, regional and full council members, uh, they are fully supportive of the Savannah burning projects. And we look forward uh, to working together with all of you, um, but also the network to try and look at how do we make the network stronger um, and to ensure that the, the funding and the resources um, are going to be, uh, you know, provided to be able to continue the fantastic work uh, that everyone does in this process. So uh, to Nova, to uh, everyone that's participating, to Anna, to, uh, my team at the Northern Land Council, to everyone that's online, um, to Tiwi Land Council, thank you. There's also a great background photo behind me at the Land Council office. Uh, I, I thank you for giving me this opportunity uh, to speak and to, you know, that I look forward um, from the Land Council point of view to receiving the report and the feedback in terms of this most important forum, which allows all of you to come together to uh, share, to network, and, and to make sure that we can, we can go forward uh, working together to make all of this happen. So thank you very much for in providing me with this information to uh, talk to all of you and to address uh, the forum on this most important topic. Thank you.